Hi, I'm DJS and I'm working with Musical Night from Breaks FM Pat Friday. Hey guys, it's your boy here, Baddy Toure for Musical Night and today I am joined by special guest DJS. Oh, thank you so much for your That's time. That's alright, no, thanks for having us down, man. Um, yeah, so I basically want to go uh, straight in for the questions. Yeah, go for it. Uh, we've done an interview with uh, Sebi. Yeah. Uh, literally just the other day, the videos on YouTube. How did you get introduced? How did he work his way up into doing <laughs> what he does are doing? Well, he's he's a little little terrier, so he, he gets stuck <laughs> in right from the start. You've you've met him enough, you know what he's like. Yeah. I met him through you know do you know Overproof, James McDermott? Yes, Overproof, yes, yes. And Bamboo. Yep, yeah, uh, his son, isn't it? Yes, it is, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Overproof set up a uh, like a Brighton networking group, it was kind of jumped on there. There was a few lads on there that sort of stood out, they've got good work rate and um Sort of had a had a chat with a few people and uh, yeah, said so put a shift in and um, yeah, got him involved. He's uh, yeah, he's a good lad, good DJ, and uh, lovely seeing him grow. So yeah. yeah, for a few months that we've had him on, he's uh, he's just getting better and better and better every single time, and that's exactly what we want from the station. So uh, how long has he been with you now? Three, four months, maybe, maybe a bit longer, maybe. No way! Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, wow. I thought yeah. it's been like years or something. No, 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 oh, no, wow, no. Okay. no, no, no. I've only been running it since January this year, so it's been a complete rebuild. That's mad. Uh, how I perceived you guys, so it was like, because it like flows a bit like more naturally, because yeah. like sometimes when you work with people, it's a bit more like stagnant yeah, yeah, and yeah, stale yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah. Considering it was just what well, like just the start of this year, yeah. it seems like you guys have got like a nice little system going. Which is, uh, I'm you know, choosy with who I work with. Mm -hmm. I've been doing this since I was 16 years old. I owned a radio station when I was 18. It was a legal one as well, not pirate, <laughs> <laughs> just in case. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so I've been I, I've I've made sure that everybody that we get on uh, on board are up for promotion, up for digging in, and have got the right attitude. I don't yeah, want to right. work with idiots. And, and that's like why, obviously, package, it? it is, it is. And uh, to be fair, I mean, the DJ skills for me is important, but the attitude is far more important for me because you you, you would succeed more mm -hmm. if you work as a team. Yeah. And that's something that I get across to everybody when they come on board. This is what we're about. If your promotion levels aren't there, I don't want to know. Yeah, yeah. It's, we're, we're putting a platform there for everybody to grow and build together. Uh, and, and having people that are just turning up for their show and going again, I don't, don't want that. It, you could be the best DJ in the world, but if you're not prepared to dig in and get involved with what we're, where we're trying to get to, then it's not going to work. Not just enough just DJing, you have to actually like go out and network. And oh, 100%. Go to these different places yeah, you do. And just actually like put in more hours than required like, yeah. just to actually stand out. Well, I'm getting it in the neck at the moment at home because no, it's. <laughs> It's, it, but yeah, it's, it's getting out there, I'm not getting paid for any of this, it, it's all about exposure, I'm 41, oh, no, no. so I've been doing this for a very long time and I got, I got shafted by a, a station I used to play on years ago and stopped for a very long time and then started doing drum and bass in the what, last six, probably seven or eight years and it started to sort of build from there, but the networking is so important. Um, it's putting yourself across, not having an ego as well because they get sniffed out. Five million miles. It, it's all I do anyway. I'm not about that. I don't want to see egos. Um, it, it, it's just one way of unsettling everything and ruining everything. So, networking, talking to the right people, making sure you're staying true to what you what you're about, and, and representing yourself properly, really, and just being open and honest. And that's that's how I work, and that's how I expect all of our guys to work, really. Yeah. So. Yeah, so I can definitely see that because uh, Sebi, uh, he, he definitely comes across like that. He's oh, he does, energy, yeah. Yeah, he does. Work ethics there. Yeah. If you don't mind, we just want to take it back yeah, to the it. start. What interested you in DJing? You said you were 16. Yeah. Um, Like, did somebody say, like, oi, like, come over here, let's do this? Yeah, or like, yeah, it was yeah. just a house party, so like, oh, so I can do that? Or, like, what um, interest you? So, so I, I grew up in Hawley. Yes. Fairly wealthy area. I had some friends who had a bit of money, and a friend of mine, his mum and dad, bought him a pair of twelve tens for his for Christmas one year. And he, he he used to do a bit of hip hop, and he used to just mess around and have a bit of fun with it. And uh, started to get into UK garage when it was taking off at the time. He just got bang into it from that word that that minute on, really. And uh, we were out raving every weekend up London at the Coliseum and all over. When you say raving, was you? Raving partying or raving actually DJing? Maybe? No, no, we were partying. It was okay. all about being part of the scene. We, 
we did our own our own nights. We had our own radio station, like I say. Um, so we were we we were doing bits and pieces, but nothing major. The sort of bigger things came when I started joining the pirate stations around Crawley area. Um, did stuff with EZ. We had a packed out two thousand capacity venue with EZ. We worked with Heartless Crew, uh, Martin Lana, Rossi B and Luca. Um, number of people. It was, it was all good. Goes yeah, it does. It does. It does. <laughs> and a few, few bits and pieces around here. And uh, like I say, I got shafted by the station at the time, unfortunately, and stopped for a few years. Yeah. Fell in love with music again, really, and here we are. So it's uh, yeah, it's been a been a been a mad mad year at least. Yeah. Well, I want to know when. What was your first set? When was your first set? What live but, set? Or, yeah, or on the radio? So, like, um, was you practicing just at your mate's house, or when was your first? Uh, when did you play live? So when we, was your first set, and when was your first paid set? Oh, bloody hell! Okay, so uh, first live set we used to do an under 18s um, when we were running the radio station initially. We used to do a, a night called uh, Lesson in Progression. Mm -hmm. um, the, the radio station we were on was called Progress FM. Um, and we used to just do like an under 18s event for them at the sort of youth club where the studio was in sort of the attic. We were what, 17, 18 at the time, I think it was about then. Uh, yeah, that was, that was sort of the first thing. And then we started doing bits and pieces at a place in Hawley, the Cambridge Hotel. That used to go off, we used to get really busy in there. Yeah. It was a good night, it was a good night. Um, quite messy, but it was, uh, it was good fun. Um, and yeah, sort of reputation started to grow from there. Really, people started to know us for what we were. We went on the uh, on the radio station for a second time because you could only get a month at a time because it was legal. You had to save up the money. You had to pay five grand a time for a month. So we had to we had to get all that. We used to we used to go wow. and do yeah we used to go and um, do um, sort of events where you would uh, sort of get money basically to to put towards it. So I can't think of the word, but. Um, yeah, we used to do a lot of events and do a lot of fun fundraising and, and, and build up the pots from there, really. And we, we managed to get five grand for the second time and went on and that opened up more doors for us. And we started playing at sort of the bigger clubs. We've done Icon in Crawley. No, 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 all unpaid, all unpaid. So yeah. I'm still yet to be paid, yeah. unfortunately, but it's, uh, I've kind of set my targets. Last year, my target was to hit a festival and play at a festival and managed to do that thanks to the Strictly Chemistry lot. Nice. What festival was that? Uh, so it was the Tropical Garden Party. So it's like a private event thing. Oh, but, sick. So yeah, they're, uh, Strictly Chemistry, they've been going for some time. They've got record label Audio Chemistry. Um, Audio Chemistry, yeah. Like, oh, okay. So it's that linked up here? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. So they're all all part of the same okay. same thing, and they they run festivals. They do a club night at the tavern. So there's one at the tavern on Saturday or tomorrow. So that's in Hawley. Um, but they run a wicked night, and getting involved with them has just been a massive boost for me. Yeah. It's it's man, given me I a nudge. Imagine, and then this year, my aim was to get into clubs and to have like a nailed on club event, really. And thanks to all the lads at Bougie, we've managed yeah, to do man. that. Yeah, and then I'm going to be joining you guys as well. well. Yeah, definitely, mate. We uh, so just our doors are open for you guys. Yeah. Um, we still need to sit down and just go through yeah, all yeah, the yeah, different yeah. things and all that kind of stuff. But yeah, um, you guys have got I think uh, New Year's Eve and Halloween or what are the ones you? Uh, Sebi's doing. He's doing Boxing Day, isn't he? Bougie. Oh, Bougie. Uh, sorry, we've got Chris Eve, which yeah. is a massive one in Ashford at Cameo. Uh, we've got maybe Sebi, Heitner and Ark playing on that one. We've got Logan D, Harry Shotter, um, yeah, e Ego like Tripping. Sick, yeah. oh, the, even sick. the Garage Room's sick. You've got Heartless in there, you've got MC uh, Luck and Neat. Yeah. Um, and there's uh, Artful Dodger as well. Yeah. I don't think it's the real Artful Dodger, unfortunately. Yeah. But it's, uh, we'll, leave that one. <laughs> yeah, we'll leave that for another day. But yeah, the, yeah, the lineup's wicked. So yeah, supposed to be, there was supposed to be one just before New Year's, but they've cancelled that now. Unfortunately, oh, they, yeah, yeah, because of um, because of New Year's, they've just booked a massive garage yeah, 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 New just... Year's one. So okay. they're just allowing that one. Um, we've got one in October. We've got Stars and Deezer and Scott Garcia. Yeah, that's the that's one. Twenty eighth. Yeah. November. We've got. We're not on that one. We've we've got a couple of our DJs. We've got Index and uh, Mr. Chips doing that one. Yeah. 
Um, but that's like a memorial night for um, some of the lads. They're, a friend of theirs died oh, a couple of years ago, so they're, 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 they're having that night and, and running that themselves. Um, and then, yeah, we've got the one in December and then New Year. Who knows what's going to happen. Oh, so. so what's the plan for next year for you guys? One, to get paid. I just want to spread the word and, and get, get as much exposure as we possibly can. Working with you guys is going to be a massive thing. Um, right. we can, once we've got that rolling and, and running as we want 1, it to. 1,000%. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because uh, th that's one of the things uh, uh, I'm trying to uh, help to encourage DJs and find ways to actually get paid. Mm -hmm. It's really weird because the first time I started paying them, yeah. it's like they were shocked. To shocked, get paid. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They, they were like, well, what's this? And I was just yeah. like, <laughs> money. Yeah, <laughs> take it. You've done a job. Yeah, but like it's mainly in the drum and bass industry or that scene where it's kind of like you get paid just like kind of drink here and there and, yeah, yeah, and all yeah, that yeah. blah 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 and stuff like that, which is nice. But then at the same time, it's like, which I do understand it because they love to play, so yeah, they'll yeah, do yeah. it for free, so they don't care. But then obviously, mate, you still got bills to pay. One hundred percent. Like just to even go to Pirates to just to rehearse, that's yeah, like, yeah, do you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. It just all adds up. And then if you're doing that and not getting paid for like so many years, it's like for, for me, I'm like, there's certain ways and just how to literally. Uh, one thing I found is that they want to play so much that they don't ask for money mm. and they're scared. Well, scared, scared mind of it. But it's like no, it not is, to get a chance to it play, so they'd rather just like not ask for money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, the I mean? thing is, there's so many about now, and, yeah, and the, oh no, the that's influx the thing as well. The, the COVID DJs that have come out. I mean, some of them have never touched a set of decks yeah, before yeah, in their yeah. life, and then they started doing it in COVID, and now they're getting out there and starting to get into places. And you got to think, there's people like ourselves that have been doing it since we're 16. We've been grafting all these years, and we're getting sort of put back by people yeah, that haven't yeah, been doing. Yeah, they haven't yeah. got the experience. But no. when you've got so many people like that that aren't prepared to take the money and then you get just undercut. Yes. Like kind of, it's yeah, you do. Kind of like a price undercut in a different way. It's just like, okay, well, if you're asking for 50 quid, I'll go with John because he'll do it for like a drink. Like, yeah. 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 You know what I mean? Like just two, like, you know what I mean? like two red stripes and that's done. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, exactly. So then next time you'll be like, okay, I just won't. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It is. And it is exactly like, like that. It it's is it's tough, just a man. saturated market. And don't get me wrong. There's some quality DJs out there that have, man, that have started. Definitely are. Um, and, and we're blessed around there. I mean, uh, some of the demos I've had have been absolute stinkers, but there's been some absolute yeah. fire stinkers. <laughs> yeah, there has, there has. Good stinkers and bad stinkers. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, there has. It's uh yeah, we're 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 blessed around here. We've got some we've got some great talent around here. It's uh it's a good place to be for drum and bass, hundred percent. Hundred percent. So what we're doing, we're putting together a workshop. So originally it was gonna be like a boot camp, but mm -hmm. I want to put it as a workshop because then so what the idea is is like two, three hours is it's designed for for anybody that's just trying to do their own thing from like modeling, dancing, rapping, DJing. Yes, we spoke about the dancers, didn't we? Yeah, 